Today, Barbara Streisand wisely tweeted, while it is understandable that Dominion settled its defamation case against Fox for $787.5 million, the full airing of the network's lies about the 2020 election would have helped our embattled democracy. I spent a bit of today responding to tweets like this that included more than a hint of disappointment in the outcome of Dominion's case against Fox. And that disappointment is completely understandable because civil litigation is usually an inadequate remedy to the harm done. The first book I wrote was about civil litigation. It was a wrongful death case. The family was suing for the unjustifiable killing of James Bowden, a 25-year-old husband and father of two children. And they won. And what the family won in civil litigation for the loss of a husband and a father was money, because that is the only way a jury assigns blame in lawsuits. In the Dominion case, if the Dominion case went to the jury, they were not going to be able to order Tucker Carlson to apologize to anyone. The jury was only going to have a verdict form that allowed them to fill in the amount of money that Fox would have to pay for what the company did. And if that jury awarded an amount of money that the judge or an appeals court considered excessive, they can simply reduce that amount of money and reduce it dramatically. The amount of money Fox has to pay to Dominion immediately is the largest amount of money in the history of defamation cases in the world. For people schooled in civil litigation who were hoping Fox would lose, there is nothing to be disappointed about. I would have loved what Barbara Streisand calls a full airing of the network's lies about the 2020 election. I share her disappointment that we didn't get that, but it was impossible for that trial to deliver that. The judge ordered no cameras in the courtroom and no recording devices in the courtroom. So you were never going to hear Tucker Carlson or Rupert Murdoch's voice answering questions under oath. You were only going to hear me reading their under oath testimony from transcripts. And it is extremely rare to have any courtroom surprises in civil litigation, especially high powered corporate litigation like this. What would have happened in the courtroom is what the Dominion's lawyers would have asked they would have ended up asking exactly the same questions that they asked in the under oath depositions that they already took. And they have already been able to make public all of their best questions and answers with Rupert Murdoch in his deposition, where he fully incriminated himself as a full participant and in effect the leader of the Fox conspiracy to invite and support the lies about the election told by Rudy Giuliani and others on Fox. It might have been fun to see Rupert Murdoch hustled away from reporters as he entered and left the courthouse, but we're not gonna get to see that. We wouldn't get to see anything else. On Twitter, Irish Eyes 2020 said to me tonight, Dominion caved. They claimed they had a slam dunk case, yet settled for less than half of what they sued for. Another thing to understand about civil litigation is the amount of money entered in the plaintiff's written complaint is never what they expect to get. It's always at least double what their highest hope is from the jury. So no, Dominion did not settle for half. Dominion settled for every penny that they could possibly get out of Fox, and it's real money that will be paid right now. Jury verdicts in civil cases are theoretical money that you have to chase for years and years and years to try to collect. The Dominion company is worth a tiny fraction of what it got from Fox in that settlement. It is extremely likely that if Dominion won that amount or more from a Delaware jury, that Fox could have successfully appealed the, that verdict as excessive and had the award dramatically reduced to say double or triple the value of the Dominion company. Judges reduce jury verdicts in civil cases all the time because the damages awarded by the jury have to make some economic sense. The jury can't just pick a huge number to make them feel good. So it is entirely possible that the jury could be completely convinced of everything, of all of the Dominion evidence presented in the case, and award Dominion a lower amount than Dominion is getting in the settlement. And there's absolutely no question that Dominion would spend the rest of Rupert Murdoch's life trying to collect that money if it was awarded to them 
by the jury. Winning jury verdicts in civil cases is difficult. Collecting the money the jury awards you is much more difficult. Just ask the people trying to get their money from Alex Jones. And those people are parents of children who were murdered, who have the highest moral case against Alex Jones. And they are going to spend years and years and years chasing that money. When you settle a case like this, you get all of the money immediately. Fox is giving up and surrendering in the fight over the money, which is what the case is about. The people who are not disappointed in any way with this outcome are the people who work at Dominion, whose lives were threatened and whose lives would be threatened again when they would have had to come to court and testify under oath in this trial. Here is Dominion attorney Davida Brook earlier today making that point in an interview with John Heilman. There's been a lot of talk, a lot of focus on all of the folks from Fox's end who are going to be required to come to court and be questioned. But there were also a dozen or so folks from Dominion who were going to have to leave their homes, leave their comfort, come to Wilmington, Delaware, and relive the very, very real trauma that they experienced in the 2020 presidential election and, frankly, to this day. And deciding to not put them through that, deciding to let them stay at home with their families was a huge factor for my client and something that weighed very heavily on him in making this decision. That lawyer doesn't represent you. She doesn't represent me. She doesn't represent American democracy. She represents those people who were going to be forced to testify in this case. John Heilman asked Davida Brooke about the possibility of securing an apology from Fox in the case, and she said this. For better or for worse, the legal system, the laws of defamation, they're not set up to get you an apology. We could have gone to trial, knocked it out of the park, and we would not have gotten an apology from Fox. Yeah. We would have gotten a damages. And so at the end of the day, that is what our legal system is set up to provide for. It's set up to provide for accountability and for justice. And when we had ticked those two boxes, we felt like we had done what we had come here to do. And what they did was a huge win. Those lawyers got a stunning summary judgment from the judge in this case, saying that they proved that everything Fox was saying about Dominion was untrue. The judge said they already proved that before trial. The jury wouldn't even have to decide that. And Dominion was very effective in their legal pleadings before the trial, revealing their condemning evidence publicly against Fox, including deposition transcripts, text from Tucker Carlson's phone about how much he hates Donald Trump, and emails from Rupert Murdoch about how crazy Rudy Giuliani is. Many people are complaining that the settlement will not bankrupt Fox. Well, legal judgments and settlements against rich corporations never bankrupt them. So if you were led to believe somewhere that that was possible in this case, I can understand why you would be disappointed by this. The coverage of American jurisprudence concentrates almost entirely on criminal procedure. All of the TV lawyer shows that the networks have been running since Perry Mason in the 1950s has, have always been about criminal cases. And the sense of satisfaction in, reach, in the reaching of guilty and not guilty verdicts in those cases, when you hear that verdict, you know that what you are hearing is much more clear and emotionally powerful and clear than it can ever be in civil litigation. Rupert Murdoch stupidly let his, led his company to the losing end of the biggest defamation case in history. The stupidity in the executive offices at Fox and at the anchor desks led to this outcome, which was completely avoidable. Someone at Fox could have said to the people hosting their shows, you can let Rudy Giuliani tell any lie he wants for as long as he wants. And at the end of it, all you have to say is, if that's true, this is a terrible situation and we're going to have to do something about it. And Fox never could have been sued because the host would have said, if that's true. Those are the legal safe words that save you $787 million. And everyone working at Fox was too stupid to know those legal safe words. Rupert Murdoch was too stupid to tell his people 
to use those legal safe words. And so Fox lost and Truth won.